How to use Google Meet Beginner's Guide. Hello everyone and welcome back. In today's video, I'll be showing you guys how you can get started with Google Meet. So let's jump right in. Now, whether you're using Google Meet on your mobile devices or on your desktop, it's a really simple to use platform for video conferencing and makes it really easy for you to connect and collaborate with anyone from anywhere. So let's jump right into Google Meet. First off is your account creation. Now, if you open up Google and you have signed on to Google on your top right, like so, I'm browsing Google and I have signed on with my account. If I just search for Meet over here, Google Meet, and then I open up the Google Meet link, this will by default have me logged into my account. So you just need to have a Google account to be able to use Google Meet. Now, what exactly are the features of Google Meet? Well, you can host group calls, you have the ability to live stream, you can capture and share recordings, eliminate background noise, and get a link that you can share as well as plan ahead. Now, these are features that are limited to premium, but the basic version of Google Meet is still pretty amazing. Now, starting off with the general settings, you're going to choose if you want to allow people to use a camera. Then you can select your microphone. If you've attached a microphone, you can use that. But another really amazing thing you can do is use your mobile device's microphone because oftentimes the microphones present on mobile devices do exceed the microphones on desktops. Then you have your speaker options. Then you can go into video and give camera permissions and select the relevant camera. And then you have your general settings. So if you want to send additional diagnostic info to Google, if you want desktop notifications, if you want to remove empty calls, so you want to be removed from any call after a few minutes if no one else is joining, and then you have the Google Workspace Smart Features. You can click on Manage over here, and then you have your Smart Features, which you can customize. Now, once you've customized this, it's time to get started. To get started, just click on New Meeting, and you have three options. You can create a meeting for later, start an instant meeting, or schedule your meeting. I want to schedule my meeting on Google Calendar. So I'm just going to select that option from here and proceed with adding my meeting. Now, I'm just going to refresh and then get started with my calendar meeting. So first off, I'm going to be adding the title of my meeting. Let's say it's going to be our Sam Aura updates. I'm gonna select the date as well as the time, let's say at 11 a.m. to 12 p.m. So you can choose the schedule. Let's say it's gonna be a 45 minute meeting. And then you can click on time zone. Now, if you're going to have attendees from multiple different regions, then it's really important to include a time zone because everyone is going to be an, at a different time. So you can click on update and add the time zone. Then you can choose if the meeting is all day or at a certain time and if this is a repetitive meeting. So what do repetitive meetings mean? Well, repetitive meetings can be things like your weekly meetup with your team members where you discuss any updates. So that would be a recurring meeting. Your recurring meetings can be on any intervals, whether it's daily, weekly on Mondays, monthly on the fourth Monday, monthly on the last Monday, annually, or every weekday. Or you can even set up your own custom intervals. So let's say on the first Wednesday of every month, I have a meeting related to just monthly updates for all of my co-workers. I can schedule that over here as well. But this is a non-repetitive meeting or non-recurring meeting, so I'm going to leave it at so. Below that, we have our event details. So it says join with Google Meet. Then we can add our location. For us, there's not going to be one. And we can even add a notification or email. I want a notification 10 minutes prior. And this is going to be my meeting link. After that, we have our button. I'm going to use a tomato red. And then I want to be marked as busy during this time with default visibility. Then after that, I can add a description for my meeting. So your meeting agenda or meeting objectives can be added over here. And you can click on this Google Drive icon to add a drive attachment. This helps you in making sure that anyone that's meant to join this meeting has access to all of the relevant information. So you can add those relevant files, PDFs, docs, all of those over here. On the right side, you're going to add your guests. So I'm just going to add myself as the guest. And then you can mark them as optional or non-optional. 
Once done, click on save, and then you're going to choose if you would like to send out invitations to your Google Calendar guests. I do want to send them, so I'm going to send them out. And just like so, your Google Meeting is added in your calendar as well. Now, if you want to use Google Meet without sending out calendar invitations, you can click on New Meeting and then click on Create a Meeting for Later. This is not going to be creating a meeting right now, but you can send this to people you want to meet with but be sure to save it so that you can use it for later. And I'm just going to proceed and you're just going to save this whatever meeting code you get and then you can meet with other people. All you need to do is share this code and then until you actually join and start the meeting, it's not going to start the meeting at all. On the right side, you can ask to use in companion mode and also turn on your presenter mode. Your microphone is turned on, but if you want, you can turn it off before joining and you can add backgrounds and effects as well. If you're allowing your camera on the top right, you can add any problems, any settings you want to change and then just click on ask to join. And just like so, I've asked to join. Please wait until a meeting host brings you into the call. I've joined in with my other account, so it's not technically letting me join. Now, if I join in via my actual account that I have used to build this meeting, I'm going to switch my account over here. And after that, I'm just going to switch into a different account. And once I do that, I'm going to be proceeding. I'm going to use without camera and then click on join now. And just like so, I am the host of this meeting. Now, when you're the host of the meeting, you guys can see on the bottom right, it's showing me that this person wants to join. I can click on view to view if it's the correct person and I can admit them individually. If you have multiple different people that want to be admitted within your meeting, you can just click on admit all and then click on admit all to admit all the people present in your waiting list. Now to view any people uh, that have asked to join the meeting, you can click on the bottom right where it says people and any requests will be listed on top. Then you also have a chatting section which allows people to send messages. On the bottom right, you also have a meeting tool section where you can integrate other tools, including recording your meetings for later use, polls, live streaming, and breakout rooms. You also have featured add-ons including Miro, Read AI, Confluence, Figma, and HubSpot. On the bottom right, you have your host control. So you can do meeting moderation with host management. Now you can let them share their screen, send reactions, turn on their microphone, turn on their video. But if you don't want to allow any of these permissions, you can turn on host management and then you as the host can alter the permissions of the contributors in your meeting. Below that, you also have chat moderations, which let contributors send messages while their meeting is running. So if you want chatting during the meeting, you can turn it on. And then you have meeting access, where if the host must join before everyone else, and then the type of meeting access, if this is open where no one asks to join, anyone can dial in, or if people are only going to be allowed in until they are invited. And then you guys can see I've removed the other person from the meeting and now it says no one else in the meeting. No one else is in the meeting. And then we have our meeting activities to allow third party apps to collect audio, let contributors add on activities as well. So just like so, we have covered all the basics of Google Meet. Now, if you have a meeting link provided by someone else, just click on the link and enter the code or link here. And if you want to instantaneously create a meeting, click on start an instant meeting to start your meeting. I hope you guys found this video helpful and if you did, make sure to leave a like and subscribe.